focus of the session this afternoon is about what is being learned about gathered work generally from the experiences of ordinary Methodists who in March were meeting in buildings and now are worshipping online. The panel are all recent migrants to this space. But what we want to be really clear about is that there are others who have, had, who have inhabited this space for much, much longer. Many disabled people, many of our young people, many of our pioneer communities have been in the online space for much longer. We also want to acknowledge that online isn't the only space Christians are worshipping in, and there's lots of hybrid worship going on with people being together socially distanced and some people are in buildings. We'll see what Boris says tonight, eh? Finally, uh, the focus today is around worship, uh, but we all know, don't we, that the church is more than just worship, it's also social justice, discipleship, evangelism, pastoral care and so much more. So this afternoon, we're learning from recent migrants and wondering what we can learn about worship in any context from all of that. So that's what we're up to. I hope that's not too much of a surprise to you. I invite you to join with me as we pray. I'm going to use part of a prayer from a recent webinar, a digital, a premier digital webinar on dispersed worship. I'm going to nick one of their prayers and um, some of my own words. So let us pray. God, the assembler of online and offline worship, God, who brings all our worship together into the throne room of heaven. God, who draws all things together. To you, we offer ourselves this time and place that we and those we serve may joyfully respond to your gospel of love in Christ. Amen. The panel to go to introduce us. We're going to start with Charlotte. Charlotte, would you like to say a little bit about yourself, please? Um, hi, everybody. My name is Charlotte. I am 23 and I am one of the three Generate reps in my spare time and in normal times work as a teacher. Um, and I've been asked to come and speak today on behalf of the three Generate reps to talk about what we've been doing on our Instagram page during lockdown for worship in an event called worship wednesday i'm just going to share my screen to sort of show you what that looks like yes yes okay, okay, okay so this is worship wednesday so just quickly if it will work i'm going to show you two quick videos that sort of show you what worship wednesday would look like so the first is a post on our instagram feed which just tells people how to get involved with what we're going to do And the second is what we put up on our story on at seven o'clock when Worship Wednesday begun. And I'd explain a bit more of this when it gets to my part to talk. Hello, everyone. This is Mary, one of your youth reps. Just a reminder that over on the Three Gen Reps Instagram account this evening, it is Worship Wednesday. Um, today, we've created a sort of reflection guided meditation for you to get involved with if you'd like. Um, it's very simple. The first step is we've picked a Bible passage for you to read and reflect on. Um, second step, we've picked a song that you might want to listen to and reflect on the passage and think about what God might be saying to you. Um, the third step is we've created a prayer request chart, um, which is basically a space for you to jot down a couple of things that you're thankful for, a couple of things that you might be worried about, and some people in your life who might need prayer at the moment. Um, with the invitation to share that chart afterwards, if you wish. Um, other than that, from seven o'clock this evening, we've also got the 3Gen Reps Instagram account open for prayer requests. If you feel like you need prayer, there are a couple of things that you're worried about that you would really appreciate someone praying for. Submit those via the... The Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you be gracious to you. So that's a bit of Worship Wednesday and you'll hear a bit more about that later. Great, thank you. Andy? Hello, my name's Andy Fishburn. I'm a presbyter in the Isle of Man. Um, since just before lockdown, we've been running 
um, an online church called Stai, which is spelled S-T-H-I-E. It's a Manx word for at home. I kind of regret calling it a Manx word now. Um, it's a, a pre-recorded video that that's available on YouTube, but I wanted to share some ideas today about how we use a Facebook watch party, which is a fairly new feature of Facebook where you get to get a group of people together and watch a video together and everyone can interact. So I'm I'm kind of there twice because I'm there pre-recorded on the film, but also there live in the chat as it goes. So um, I'll share a bit more about that later. Thank you, Wayne. Hi, I'm Wayne Grocock. I'm a presbytery in uh, South Devon, living in a little town um, called Budley Salterton. I'm a presbyter of three churches. Um, our journey on, on, on this mad world is started on paper. Um, my, my congregations are mainly elderly, so we, we started writing um, services, which, because I also run 12 baskets, we publish and send out free as the vine at home. Um, and our journey has been one from, from paper onto Zoom, um, teaching uh, older people how to use Zoom and, and IT, which is um, quite amusing at times. Um, and then we've developed that. So we also stream live uh, on Facebook at, at the same time. And ours has just been a, a great journey of collaboration um, and, and a real learning ethos um, as we go on. Thank you. Joe. Joe Brown. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm in North Cheshire. I cover the rural area of our circuit. Um, seven churches, eight buildings, predominantly elderly congregations. But vast majority aren't technically literate. So I knew this was going to be a challenge. But we've gone from, like Wayne, paper into digital areas and uh, a phone reflection that you can phone up a phone line and hear the weekly reflections and everything is using the same material just in different formats to engage with as many people as possible. Thank you, David. I'm David Jepp I'm, uh, from London District uh, based in Romford Circuit. We have uh, 11 churches and also one mission centre. Uh, similar to the previous speaker, what she said was exactly, uh, I echo that one too, very mainly early congregations. We started with the uh, sending uh, letters or putting the letter through the doors, and that started in um, March and April, then we thought we must do something. Uh, we, our platform at the moment is Zoom uh, via uh, face, uh, face, uh, Facebook uh, Live and combination with the uh, YouTube. Uh, is really, we are just beginners to start and we're developing from there how that can be reached out uh, more than our members. So that is, around, I, will, I will talk about more about when, uh, when our conversation will be later. Hi everyone, I'm Katie in the Wilmslow um, style Hanforth churches which are near Manchester Airport. Um, like many of you have been involved in leading video services um, and intentionally short um, videos um, and completely new to it as Alison mentioned I've never taken a selfie before let alone try to video myself preaching. Um, so yeah I shall be sharing a little bit about that experience and why intentionally short services later on. Thank you folks, that's really good to meet you all and uh, welcome everybody. My name is Fiona Fidgin. I work for the Learning Network in the North East. And um, as Alison said, we've got a couple, uh, uh, three sessions where we're going to interview um, some of our panelists. I'm going to be talking to Joe and Wayne, so it'd be really good if you could both unmute yourselves um, and then I know that you, you can speak. Um, we're looking at collaborative worship in this particular first part, looking at collaboration, but both of you have talked about um, at the beginning kind of using paper and having an elderly congregation and I suspect that probably rings bells for quite a lot of people here. Um, it'd be really good to just hear about your beginnings, to just have a sense of, you know, when the lockdown happened, did you jump for joy and think, oh, this is great, I can learn new skills, or did you go into an absolute panic attack? Um, what kind of, how, you know, what was happening for you at the beginning of lockdown? Should we start with you, Wayne? Yep. Um, 
mine was quite easy because I was going to start with paper because I, I, I get paper, I like paper, we, we produce paper. Uh, so week one of lockdown for us um, was I created a, a cut down service. Uh, yep, that became Vine at Home. Um, and we posted it out and we emailed it out. Um, so that was great, all done until an email came from one of my members to say, hey, any chance of a Zoom coffee afterwards? Um, never used Zoom before, so I thought, well, okay, why not? And then our journey has progressed from there uh, as a whole learning experience for, for all of us. So uh, yeah, week one paper followed quickly by Zoom for us. Okay, and Joe? I think there was a little bit of a panic <laughs> working out what was the best way to go about things. So we did start with paper first, putting a Bible reading and reflection for, I did them on a, a monthly basis. So what I was posting out and what was going out in emails was a month's worth of material. And then working on thinking that some of my members I knew had sight issues. So actually reading that would be quite difficult. And some I knew had hearing issues. So I started to think, well, how can we blend all of these things together? Which then led me on to the dial a reflection on Twilio. So you phone a number and you can listen to that week's reflection. And then I started helping to put videos together for the circuit and material for the circuit live stream that we had a weekly live stream worship and then I started to produce my services in in that way as well so you had from paper to video and that is still continuing okay that's great and um a sense of you know we were, we we're thinking about collaboration and um so who are the people that you've been working with to do this? I love the way, Joe, you just kind of say, so I went from paper to video. And um, it's just kind of like, oh, that's really skillful. Um, but I'm sure for many people, you know, most of us probably hadn't even heard of Zoom before. We kind of like, you know, for three or four months ago, we probably didn't even know Zoom existed. And now we're all Zoom experts. Um, so kind of how did you move from that? What was, what was your sort of process? Who were you working with and how did that happen? Well, thankfully, a couple of the ministers in our circuit are very technically able so they gave us some hints and tips on how to do things. Um, I then started asking people through my congregations who would like to be a part of the worship, who would like to read the readings, who would like to do prayers um, and it started from that point of, of them thinking well for people who aren't technically knowledgeable how do they record something and send it to me? So those who were able to did that. Others, we found a different way of me being able to go with a two meter extendable stick, microphone on the end, attached to my mobile phone. So I could record them doing the reading or doing the prayers. It's, it's, it, it works. So it, it was just trying to think outside of the box. How can I engage with those who don't engage with technology? So I love that. I really wish I had a photograph somehow of you. You, you describe it as a long you know, stick, but in fact, actually, you probably, um, did you say it was a big flagpole or something like that, that you kind of, uh, oh, here we go. Here we are. The, yep. the... <laughs> on the end, just attach it to my phone. Done. Fantastic. That's great. And Wayne, what about you? What's been your process? So our, our process was just working with those that had some IT skills already. Um, I also, from week one, created, I just would randomly on Monday ring members up who would participated and ask them to, to give me feedback. And, and so built up a, a whole random list of critical friends who would just talk me through their experience and, and learning experiences. So for me, that, that's a vital part for how we've grown. And then just slowly discovering roles. Uh, I think the first role I added was a Facebook steward. Uh, when we went on to Facebook Live, I asked one of the members who I know is always on Facebook to say, hey, can you just sit on this page and interact with those that, that come to us? So it's just been a, a slow evolution 
of of encouraging people teaching people and as taking it seriously mm. but with a light touch yeah i love that idea of a facebook steward i think that that's just <laughs> that's really great We've, we need a zoom steward here i think um but that's also something about um new roles and new kind of gifts and skills that are emerging for folks in your congregation how how do you think that's changing your sense of church and your sense of ministry together i i, I think for me it, it's the fact that we it's a joyous enthusiastic growing team of people that are just constantly asking so so where next god yeah things have moved so fast um that it could be scary but actually for most of us it's excitement i love the chaos the 15 minutes between when i open zoom and when we start the service this growing pool of older people that are giggling and chatting and just so excited as they see each other week by week their friends i have never seen such excitement when it should be so scary for them they are not young people on the whole but they're just seeing this as a as a joyous expression and, and gathering of of god coming with them in in this journey okay lovely joe what, what about you I think it's wonderful because people are finding that they have other gifts that they can share with their local communities. Um, it's good to see. I had last week one lady in her 90s say, I would really love to do a reading one day. But I wouldn't know how to record it. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't normally stand up in church and read the reading, but she was willing to do a recording. So there's, it's, it's opening up new avenues. It's, it's because their face isn't right there in front of you. Mm. It takes away a bit of that scariness of standing in front of the congregation. So it's opening up so more, many more avenues for people that they never thought that they had. And I find that really exciting. Yeah. That more can become collectively involved. That's great. When, when we were talking, Wayne, Joe and I, last week, um, we were talking about a sense, I suppose we, we, we developed this, this theme of an ethos of learning, um, not just for, you know, um, ourselves but in the context of you know church and God and all of us together in the whole context of ministry um, so friends we're about to send you off into breakout rooms to reflect on some questions um, a question that I'm about to give you but also some of the conversations that you've heard between Joe and Wayne just thinking around collaboration and collaborative worship um, and both Wayne and Joe said when they started they really had no idea where they were going or indeed what they were doing um, now, that may well ring bells um, with some of you. Um, so the question is this, in what ways have you and or your congregation developed a give it a go mentality? So I love that, you know, that idea of, of Joe getting her flagpole and just, you know, I don't know, did you tape your phone to the end of, uh, end of that? Suddenly duct tape emerges into my head or something. I just hold it in my hand. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. Um, so in what ways have you and or your congregation developed a give it a go mentality? We talked about kind of just being courageous a bit more um, in the context of church. And how are you seeing the benefits of that now? So in what ways? Are you, are you aware of you or folks in your congregation saying, oh, let's give it a go? And um, how are you seeing the benefits of that now? So we're going to um, whiz you into breakout rooms. We're going to put you into rooms of four, um, not four breakout rooms, four people. And uh, we've got 10 minutes to have that conversation. Great. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much for coming back. We hope you had a fruitful conversation in your breakout rooms. Uh, we're going to hear from Andy and Charlotte are going to have a conversation with a particular focus around participation in worship. And I wondered, Andy, um, what do you think participation is in a worship context? Can I show you my 
my prop. I've made something especially for this afternoon. Are you ready for this? So this is my uh, this is my intensity of participation prop. Uh, very high tech. So um, this is like no effort at all through to this is a really draining experience. And my theory is that normal church, normal run of the mill church, starts here and goes up to about here. Because it takes quite a lot of effort, even if you're, even if your participation in church is really quite passive. If you're, if you're just someone who turns up and sings and prays and listens, it's still quite an effort to get there to church on a Sunday morning. You've got to be in a certain place. You've got to. It's, it, it, it takes effort. It takes effort. And a few people get to participate in a. a uh, a more active way perhaps they're reading or preaching or introducing but what i've found is that through doing sty it's given an opportunity for all sorts of kind of low intensity ways of participating and so for, for instance at the start of each sty service we have a kind of a 30 minutes kind of waiting room where people can chat and i ask people to um, just type a number between one and ten of how they're feeling today and that's quite an easy way for people to just share a bit about themselves. Um, we, uh, we really encourage on the watch party uh, people to use uh, emojis. So we get lots of, sort of laughing faces and lots of hearts. We've had 26,000 of these. Facebook keeps track and uh, sort of caring ones as well. So these, are, these go flying around from person to person. It takes such little effort to click the button to, to show you that actually we, we care about that. And that's something which I think we can translate back into, into the sort of the more normal forms of church, the idea that we each care for each other. And it's not just front to the seats, it, it goes from seat to seat as well. Um, we, uh, at the end, when we're praying for people, we ask people just to type an initial for someone they'd like to play for. Uh, and again, that's a very easy thing to do. Um, and of course, it can happen anywhere. We get lots of people in Stye who are at home and can't do anything else. They, they can't get that amount of, uh, they can't manage this. But it, it provides a way for a low intensity participation. And I think that's, that's really great. That's um, really interesting, really interesting. So Charlotte, in your context, where the youth reps have been using Instagram to offer worship, what, how... What's your understanding of participation of worship then in how you've been doing things? So for us, it's been very much sort of participation rather than, as Andy's been saying, like in like a local community. It's mainly been between the people accessing the worship and people putting the worship together. So the reps and the people that we represent and the people that are, you know, participating in our worship. So if people send in like a prayer request or something, it will just be our groups that see it and they so signify that it's something that wants to be shared with everyone but there have been opportunities we've had to do something creative where they've people that have been taking part have been encouraged to do something and then to share it with someone else or to share it on their feed for their friends and the people that they follow to see so I think it's for us it's been very much sort of like getting people involved to think about how they can be involved themselves in worship and make the worship that we've kind of got this vague structure around how we can make that worship in some structured way something that's very personal to them and an opportunity for them personally to connect with God as opposed to connecting with each other and connecting with us if that does that kind of make sense yeah it really does Charlotte that's really interesting so so for you why do you think it's important for people to participate in worship whatever the context is. Why is that important? I think it's really important for people to be able to connect with God in their own way because worship and worshipping God is why we're doing worship and why we do what we do. And I think sometimes Worship Wednesday came out of a discussion that we had as reps where we said, we talked about what our experience of church had been in lockdown, whether that was Zoom church, YouTube church, however our local churches have been doing church. And then talking about young people that we represent, what their experiences of church have been. And a lot of us had quite negative kind of like, we don't feel very engaged. We're taking part because we're being asked to take part, but it doesn't feel like it's for us. 
and actually to then be able to do something where it was an opportunity for us to connect with God in that very almost direct way rather than being pointed you need to listen to this to be able to connect with God it was an opportunity in however you know people wanted to within this vague structure that we had to be able to connect with God themselves on a very sort of personal and individual level. Right that's really interesting so Andy how would you reflect on what you've just heard Charlotte saying and are there any links there to how you've been doing your Facebook watch parties? Yeah, I think the I think the idea between a, a watch party on Facebook and an Instagram live is a kind of similar. They've got similarities. Um, the one of the differences is that the Facebook watch party is is pre-recorded, so it's got a um, and that's got its benefits and it's got its um, drawbacks. Whereas the Instagram live is a little bit more fluid and. Um, uh, it, it, with a with a with the watch party, it because it's pre-recorded, it's got its own pace and rhythm, and it, it just sort of runs in a smooth way. Whereas the Instagram Live, uh, you get a bit more, um, it's a bit more chaotic and a little mm. bit, and that, that's good and bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of the things because I've been to some of the worship that you've led, Andy, and one of the things I've found at the the way that you've kind of curated the acts of worship is you've given people the opportunity to print off a sheet. For themselves to do at home and engage and chat n- note down their learning and stuff and or to put it in the facebook chat and i found as the worshiper it's been really great to have the opportunity to participate um in that way so much so that when i eventually go back to a building i'm going to start taking a notebook in with me so that i can jot down my own thoughts because it's kind of taught me to re-engage better that's my observation around participation there have you heard any feedback from anybody else Andy, I'm going to ask some questions to Charlotte because your internet connection seems to be dropping a bit low. Charlotte, um, I just wondered if there was anything distinctive about Instagram that you, why do you prefer that as your platform for the worship for the young people? And why do you think that enables more participation? I think for us, like we didn't want to mimic what churches were doing like locally because I know there's been a lot of Zoom services, a lot of you know different things going on whereas we wanted something that people could dip into whenever was appropriate for them so as you saw at the start on those videos we had the post that would go up in the morning that would kind of tell people what was going to happen and actually people from that they might have used that at I don't know 10 o'clock in the morning to sort of have a little bit of worship time to read the bible verse that we'd shared or the you know, listen to the song that we'd recommended. But then at seven o'clock, sometimes we would go live. And so we'd have a live conversation with people that would tune in to watch at that time. But other times we would just put things up on the story at seven o'clock. So it was there for people to engage with from seven o'clock and would be available for the next 24 hours. And so for us to have that available for people to sort of do whenever was appropriate for them was really good and Instagram as well was something that young people are using all the time and so to be able to put something almost in someone's without them having to go looking for it there was always that opportunity for worship available there to them like straight away just in their phone in their hand yeah I think it's genius the way you've been doing that I think it's excellent Thank you so much, both of you. Um, We've got a question for everybody now. So you're going to go back into the same breakout rooms. And the question that we encourage you to have a go at chatting about together is, what can we learn from online worship about participation, which we can apply to worship in all contexts? So I've noticed on the chat, there's been some conversations about is low participation good or is that bad? And is dipping in and out good or bad or all those kind of things. So what can we learn about online worship from online worship about participation that we can apply to worship in all contexts. See you in 10 minutes. Hello, I'm uh, Bob Bartondale. Am I on screen? Uh, My role is as officer for worship and local preachers uh, in the connectional team. And uh, I'm, 
fascinated by how the church through the years has, has adapted and changed. It might not seem like it a lot of the time, but, uh, but that's what the church has done over the generations. And I'm particularly excited to see how the, uh, how the church is evolving right now and what, uh, I'm wondering what the church might look like um, in coming times. Um, it's my privilege to um, uh, be able to talk to, uh, to two people, um, Katie Thomas, David Jeb, uh, both of whom have been discovering different ways of reaching out to the community um, during lockdown. Um, and I'd like uh, to ask uh, them each in turn, really, to, to explain how they have found that they've used technology and how it's evolved for them um, in their reaching out uh, as a church into the community over the, uh, the last uh, few months. So, um, uh, Katie, do you want to start just by... Um, recapping a little bit about what you've been doing and, and how it's been going. Um, yes, thank you. Right from the start, um, a couple got in touch, Kathleen and Chris Lachlan, asking whether we'd do anything online and would they like, would we like their help? Um, Chris had worked, worked for 30 years with BBC worship from Songs of Praise to the Heaven and Earth um, so, um, program and had lots of wisdom to share with us and began by asking the question you know what did we want to do and uh, and it was about keeping the three congregations that I ministered to connected keeping lots of people connected with one another um, my initial response was yes I would do something as long as it would be password protected and nobody else other than the congregation would get to see it uh, out of fear but he really challenged me to, to just like fling wide open. He said, you know, the gates of the church, he said, you know, really challenged about the huge opportunity we've got. And from his experience, challenged us to do a very short service because people's um, attention span is very different at home than when sat in church. And um, early weeks when I sent in a seven minute sermon it was rejected for being far too long um, so our services are deliberately short and um, they're video services shown on YouTube using um, members of the congregations to to do the prayers to read the readings and we're also gifted with musicians and so working with the team and um, recording our own songs and um, people with fantastic editing skills putting it all together for us but a 20 minute act of yeah. worship yeah fantastic thanks katie i mean it sounds very much what you're doing is is uh, is creating um, a, a preformed act of worship which people can engage with by by watching and worshiping themselves at home. Um, I think that contrasts uh, quite sharply, really, with what um, with what you've been uh, doing in your uh, in your circuit, David. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what your uh, technological journey has been like and uh, and how you've been reaching out um, with church, David? Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. And mainly, mainly thing is, um, in our circuit, uh, we have a, a cluster, two teams working together, uh, me and my colleague, uh, we found we need to offer something. And also are not necessarily the church members, those who are outside the church too. Okay. Uh, how do we do that one? The Facebook Live came first uh, kind of avenue, or you can call it like a tools for us to use that one too. Then uh, altogether, there are six uh, online services happening every Sunday, every week uh, in our circuit here too. So we tell me it's a, it's a shame to the public to lose that one. And we have a connection with the community, uh, whatever we plan uh, through the Facebook uh, Live, and that is translated into, connected to, to, to the Zoom, uh, from Zoom to the t uh, YouTube, and also WhatsApp also uh, uh, to join together. So we learn from our mistakes. Uh, we were not expert uh, technologically, but we learn from our mistakes. But we never ever repeat the same mistakes again. And then one of the things, part of the thing is we found, uh, is not necessarily for him to reading one sermon. It's kind of more kind of creative, imaginative way, how on the people outside of the church building can feel belonging, can feel able to reconnecting. So when you, for example, I want to just briefly say the last Sunday, we managed to invite uh, the doctor, medical doctor, uh, who is, who is a non-Christian, uh, working from NHS here. He came as a, made a testimony about the 
imminent second wave going to come and all sort of things. She prepared to give us a testimony. The people heard about that one, and you're looking at our uh, Zoom service, plus Facebook Live, plus WhatsApp, and YouTube, all combination together. We are around just over 300 people listening every, every Sunday. And I found this particularly a testimony from not necessarily our church members, outside of the church uh, people too. And having said that, it is not always easy. There are lots of preparation you need to do. Uh, it's not going to happen like uh, when you do the normal service on Sunday morning. You need only two hours to prepare beforehand. This need a one week preparation. And the social use need to be uh, relevant to the people, those who are watching you. Not necessarily all are Christians. We have non-Christians. We have Muslims also listening our prayer, our program too, week, week in, week out too. Yeah, fantastic, David. I mean, um, it seems like, um, looking online has, has, uh, has enabled all sorts of connections to be made with people um, outside of the church, people you might not normally expect to come into a building. Katie, have you got anything to, to share on that? Um, what's, uh, what's been your experience of, uh, of putting church online and, and who's, who's been connecting with it? We've, one of the things just to say about, about being a short service, it's not so much the attention span that's short, but we just have to because there's so many distractions in, in the home, um, we've kept it short to try and engage, engage people. But because it's been short, lots of people have said um, their partners have sat with them because they've realised they've not had to sit down for a whole hour. But their partners have sat down or they've, as a whole family, people have sat and watched it together. But also people have, you know, sending the links out on WhatsApp. People have been saying that they've been sending it to family members and friends and inviting people in a way that they would never have invited people along on a Sunday morning, but have been able to, to share this. But we also realized we could invite other people into the services in the same way that we couldn't do on a Sunday. So we started to invite people to do readings who, who, who've moved away from us. Somebody, you know, a family now living in Spain, you know, shared something about their life in lockdown. and we um, engaged with the church in Chile and had sort of, you know, links made with people overseas. So it's amazing to realize how, how it's been able to be shared. Um, a chaplain has, you know, it's, the service is being projected onto the, into a hospital ward, onto one of the walls on a, on a Sunday morning with permission there. So we found a whole load of people engaging with us and, and us trying to work out how we engage with them now. So we've invited people to send in their photos and where they're listening from, but also encouraging people to use, you know, share testimony in, in the services. Um, but yeah, found that people are confident in sharing a service with a friend or, or family in the way that they've never done before. And that's been huge. Fantastic. David, can I ask you uh, maybe what surprised you most um, about the, the way that doing church this way has been able to connect you with, uh, with community people who you wouldn't otherwise have been in contact with? The COVID, before COVID-19 uh, happened, we are very insular, very insular, 80 members to look after each other Sunday morning, Sunday uh, week, weekdays. One of the things that surprised me, outside, like uh, Katie said about outside our church building, there are people who wanted to feel belonging. They don't want to come. Physically, they don't want to come. They don't want to come. Even still, they don't want to come to church. They are not set in the same language in the community. But in the, soon after we introduced like uh, the rapport we made with a local council, a uh, Haverin council, with uh, so many uh, local councillors, have a kind of communication with us to say, why don't you open that link to us? There are a lot of people, those who are living alone, they would like to listen. They are not Christian, they are not churchy people, they are not Methodist at all, but they want to listen. That's what really surprised me. Our 80 members congregation, our wall widen like open doors, even though we are not physically inside the building. And I really found, encourage me, challenge me, and uh, challenge all of us, uh, but those who are doing the online services. But I think that's all about the gospel, isn't it? Not to keep the gospel only for us. We need to be shared. We need to be shared. That really surprised me. How are the non-church members willing to listen 
uh, willing to listen and following. For example, briefly say, one Sunday we couldn't do that one, everything collapsed. And I got a couple of calls from our same street I'm living and say, why you didn't do the service today? They are not church members. They are asking why we didn't do the service today. That's why yeah. that's had a huge impact. Fantastic. Well, I was, I was going to ask you, um, you know, are you planning to keep these lines of uh, communication open for the future? But, but I guess from what I've heard, um, the answer is obvious that uh, we, we're not going to stop doing these kind of exciting, innovative things uh, now. Uh, as uh, things hopefully in the future uh, ease. Um, so instead, I'm going to um, throw that question over to everyone uh, for, their, uh, for their breakout groups, really. The, and the question is really this, that um, during COVID-19, we've learned um, all sorts of new ways to, uh, to be church and to reach out to people who'd never probably come into a church building. The question is, how are we going to keep contact uh, and how are we going to keep on reaching out and using these uh, these new skills that we're we're learning, uh, these online opportunities? How are we going to keep doing this and, and developing it for the future? So. Um, uh, so that's the, uh, the question for the breakout uh, groups and you'll disappear off into groups for 10 minutes uh, now. And I hope you're going to come up with some really good answers to that. So uh, all the best. See you soon. Welcome back, folks. I think we're uh, on the uh, on the last 10 minutes of conversation. I um, hope this has been a good experience for you. We're going to finish off just in a conversation with the six um, people who have uh, been sharing some of their experiences. Charlotte, Andy, Katie, David, Wayne and Joe, if you'd like to unmute yourselves, that would be grand. Um, and then we can have the wee conversation that we might have. Um, my little list here says I'm talking about the theology of worship, which I have to say seems incredibly scary sort of thing to talk about. But I think one of the questions that we're trying to think about is what is God saying to us at this moment in time? And how do we listen to what our experiences have been? What's our context of mission? What are we learning about ourselves? What are we learning about the church? What are we learning about God? All of these um, very easy questions, which we're just going to answer in about 10 minutes in 10 minutes time. Um, but before we do that, friends, I just want to run past a couple of things with you all here. So we've just been having a conversation, those of us here who have been putting this together. Um, what resources um, do you use and what might you find helpful if we send out a little list of everything for you? So in the chat button, loads of people have been saying, oh, I use this. I use that. I use this. I use that. It would be really helpful if you can put into the chat button the kind of resources that you are using. So Joe Brown was talking about using the um, uh, uh, a phone in prayer tool and other people have been using about video editing suites and all these sort of things, free resources or expensive resources. Um, what kind of resources are you using? Put those in the chat and we want to send that out to you so that you all have that information. And secondly, what would help you next? What are you looking for in the context of um, being resourced? Um, now, what we don't want is kind of, um, I'd like to know how to use Zoom better. Um, my colleague Howard says there are loads of things on Google and YouTube as to how you can learn how to do technology. But what kind of things in terms of ministry and worship um, and theology, what are you looking for that might be helpful for you? So we've been having a conversation about the hybrid church. Our colleagues in the Midlands um, produced um, a video. I think it was with Joe Cox, Darling, and Pete Phillips talking about the hybrid church. Alison and I have been having a conversation about um, folks on disability who have been, you know, here on, on online for a very long time and who are experts and how we listen to them. So if we can put some of those things into the chat, that would be really helpful. But Let's just go back to our six folks and share some of our thoughts about what we are learning. Um, one of the very interesting conversations that I've been following on chat has been about um, inward looking and outward looking, whether we think Zoom is an inward looking um, platform or whether we think Facebook is more outward looking. Um, in the context of mission, what do you think any of you are learning or have learned about worship? <laughs> online. Anybody want to come back to me on that one? I, 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 Wayne. Okay, I, I think for me, it's, it's lowered the threshold. Um, we, as I said earlier, we use Zoom and live 
uh, Facebook Live, and I have people who are members who live close, who I've never seen in the building, joining us online. So, so there's a safety, there's an accessibility. I've even had one, one person join me on holiday uh, live from a yacht in Gibraltar. They didn't want to miss the Zoom. Now, we saw a little bit too much of him, um, but he was still there and wanted to be part of it. And I think for me, that's the exciting fascination. People want to be there and they weren't in the building. Okay, any other folks on the panel do you want to just put your name, hands up? Andy? Yeah, I I'd, I'd so totally agree with that idea of lowering the threshold, but it's also been a really interesting leveller in that people who are mm. on the edges of things, uh, they just appear like, you know, they, they appear on the same platform as someone who's been doing it for, for 60 years. Um, it, there's a real sense that people who are new to this are just as good at participating in an online act of worship and they're just as just as welcome so it's a uh, it it makes it really easy to to draw people in and i i've found in my experience that loads of people who haven't really engaged with church normally have found a way in and have found it found it works for them so that it's so exciting in a missional in a missional sense great david I mean, one of the things I, I really felt that one is very clearly came to me, very challenged me too. We spend lots of too many years inside the building, too many years inside the building without engaging the community, not as we preschool or something running. How do we bring people to Christ? That came very clear to me, very clear to me. We mustn't miss out this opportunity. I know COVID is so bad, it's affected a lot of people, but it's also challenged us to rethink church, rethink church. Don't stay where you are before COVID-19. Go back again and start again, something new, fresh start. If you don't do that one, we are the one of the people who we are going to miss out so many things. Like I mentioned with Bob, we had a chat earlier. And um, in the last five years, um, I reach out more people in the last three, six months than I did the last five years in the circuit. Not necessarily members outside church circuit too. A prayer meeting, any normal prayer meeting before COVID, we ask a prayer meeting, only three come or four come, or my wife come, five people come. Now we have 120 people coming together every week. How not we are going to translate that one into physically come to church on Saturday morning, 9.30, for them to come and uh, pray together. I found the theology behind this one is we are very comfortable. We were very comfortable inside the building. We need this has got to go out in a different form of the ministry. That's from my reflection. Yeah, and I guess that that is about mission, isn't it? It's about the outward looking and how we you know engage with people beyond our walls. Joe, Katie, or Charlotte, anything you want to add to that? Just to just to say, you know, it's given me so much hope. You know, every week looking at so many of the different types of services and the ways that churches and circuits are, are reaching out. There's so much creativity there, and just the joy of knowing that people are interested. You know, there's been that sense of, you know, for ages we've hearing about declining figures and it can get really, you know, really disheartening. But actually this, this just shows us that people are interesting, interested. They want to, want to hear. And it's, the, the challenge is, you know, is moving forward, how we continue to sustain this, because it's really hard work mm -hmm. <laughs> alongside yeah. all of the, um, you know, going back to Sunday that, um, but just hope really an encouragement um, that, you know, the gospel is very much still relevant and needed and vital for people. So, you know, let's keep praying and continuing to find ways to engage. That's grand. Thanks. Joe? I think one of the really interesting things for me has been that before lockdown, many of our house band didn't engage in worship. We never gave them that ability to engage in worship. Now we can. And that is the really exciting thing that they still want to worship. And we want them to worship with our communities. And all this technology gives us the ability to tap in to those. Because the first first time I did the dial a reflection, mm -hmm. the first person who commented was one of my housebound members who doesn't see, who rarely sees anybody else, who rarely gets to speak to anybody else. They can pick up the phone and listen to somebody else's voice. They feel as though they are engaging in worship. And that's, I just think is fabulous. Mm. Fantastic. Charlotte. I think for 
me and what we've been doing I think the opportunity to meet people where they are has been really important and the opportunity that we've got as church to not just be like a Sunday morning activity we're something that can you know reach people whenever and wherever they're at because a lot of young people might have football training rugby training our church we never know when we're going to get all of our young people there because there's so many different things that can often you know take precedence over church and actually having the opportunity to meet young people old people whoever where they're at and so that they can you know engage in something that's personal to them has been really valuable and something that I hope we can carry on with as church great thank you so panelists here's a really easy question just to um finish us off because um Alison's going to do a little wee ending after I've just had this conversation you might want to just pause for a few moments to just take a deep breath um what do you think God is saying to you now in terms of ministry mm-hmm <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, mine was the same. Keep reaching out. And my word is that be prepared for any eventuality in the future. Be prepared. I think for me, it's that you're never not qualified enough to do it. Because a lot of us, you know, we've never led a service before, but we've been able to do something. It is simply just giving something a go. Give it a try, see what happens. Yeah, and I'd say don't uh, don't underestimate the the people who are taking part, even though you don't get any evidence that they're taking part. Okay, thank you, thank you, folks. Um, friends, maybe we might just do a little virtual um, applause for our panelists um, who have shared something of their um, ministry and their how God has been moving in their lives. Oh, thank you. Hands up, thumbs up. Um, over the last three or four months and I think the invitation that we really want to extend to you is that we ask these folks um, who who we had heard about who were just trying out bits and pieces and doing this that and the other um, and I'm not entirely sure whether any of them would say that they were experts when they began but they've certainly been been developing skills and developing that sense of where God is calling them and what our church might be might be like for the future and I think that's the invitation that is open to all of us. Um, Alison is just going to lead us in a wee reflection as we close our time together. Great thank you. Um, I was just getting myself ready for the prayer so I can't remember if you said this so forgive me Fiona. Uh, we're going to send out a recording of this to you all you have the video of it and um, the chat so that you'll have a recording of of that. So we'll get that out to you. Um, If you want to let us know how we did, please write so in the chat and then we'll use that as evaluation in case we do anything like this again. Uh, But what we'd really like to encourage you to do uh, is to settle and um, we'll close our time in prayer. This prayer is taken from the Methodist Year of Prayer. God of love, God for all. Your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches, online, hybrid and in person, to the new seasons of humility and faith, change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus Mm. and show us the way. Amen. Thank you very much for coming. This isn't the last you've heard of us because Gabriella will send you uh, sometime after this event, um, follow on stuff. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you again. Mm.